Yo, 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 hey, listen, man. Stop what you're doing, man. Chicago, we in the house, man. All the way in Chicago with Larry Hoover Jr., my guy, man. Ain't nothing like a Larry Hoover Jr. interview. Spending time out here in Chicago with the best. Check it, man. Boss Talk 101, stop playing. Y'all better watch this interview. He don't need no introduction. This guy, man, I'm going to be honest with you. Ever since I met him, man, I, I became... He became a friend of mine, man. I'm up here in Chicago because of him. Um, his birthday definitely was it was a big birthday. We're going to talk about all this. Um, and I'm going to be real with you, man. We're going to just talk about a lot of different things that surround this brother, man. One of the coldest dudes I know, man, when it <laughs> comes down to being a good friend, somebody that'll talk to you and tell you, hey, man, yeah, this is cool. That ain't cool. but And, and you need that as friends, man. Larry Hoover Jr. is in the building on Boss Talk 101. One more again. What's going on, brother? Hey, hey what's going on? On, man. So what people can expect to see you coming up and going forward with Larry Hoover Jr.? Well, with me, man, they can see me steadily fighting for um fighting for my father. father. You know what I mean? And fighting the you know, just doing new ventures in life, just trying to move forward, keep growing mm -hmm. to different things. So, I yeah. talked to one person that was like uh it was like when you came to the school they had to speak. I can't even remember who it was to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. That it was like they basically were told that you were coming to this school or something. Mm. And I was like, it, was it like that? Like, do you ever remember your presence being something that affected the whole surroundings? <laughs> or is that somebody cloud chasing? Because I'm in Chicago. Like they had to behave once they once you came to the school. They, you know. Then, I don't even remember who said it. I wouldn't even glorify it if it was. But it was like, was it a thing where when your presence is felt that things, you know, have to be altered? Or maybe like, he didn't you know, know about not it. Not that I know of. That, I always yeah. felt like I carried myself on an even tone where I know, you know, it's me and you. We all, we all together. We on mm, the same. That's real. You know what I mean? And it's opportunity for everybody to be whatever they want to be if you're willing to work at it. I know some of it comes from okay, that's my father in the name, but you know, I never felt like okay, I'm here and this it needs to be like this because I'm here. Maybe I wanted certain things to be a certain way, but I always wanted to be uh, peaceful and respectful. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But not that somebody had to. I never took like, you know, Put the word out. Make sure it's like this. Yeah, if they feel that way. You know, the name. Totally on them. Yeah, the name carries weight, though. Correct, because when you think about it, you look at the the people and they watch the news and they read the tabloids and they see all of the social media. You think back then it was just tabloids. Yeah, it wasn't even it, it wasn't even it, it was Inquirer mm -hmm. or something. It would be the, they had a way that they put media out, media out. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I could see that being a thing. I, I really could, thinking about it. Well, in the media and the tabloids always gave a lot of the wrong narrative. Yes. You know what I mean? All they could see is one side of things. And, yeah, it has been, you know, sides of things where it could have been better. But as it grew and moved forward, none of that was on. <laughs> yeah. None of that was publicized, you know what I mean? That's and real. You still got people that don't know what the real mission was and what my father believed in and they still expressing a uh you know a negative identity. Like, yeah. This is my this is my life and my legacy. You know what I mean? My father's legacy was supposed to be more of like Mayor Daly. Mayor Daly was the de was the mayor of Chicago and they family came from the streets. He seen that he wanted to follow that blueprint and he mm. was on the the path to following that blueprints, but that was like too much power. He was supposed to be more Malcolm X, just coming from the streets to seeing what it is to bring his people together so we can try to get a stake in our community. But they, you know, kind of stopped his legacy from moving forward. They, mm -hmm. you know, gave him, they gave him the last case that he had, which was a drug conspiracy case. And a lot of people get a second chance after a drug conspiracy case. They mm -hmm. don't want to, give him a second chance to move forward in life. We just, we constantly go keep fighting, but we would talk about the uh, 
talking about the tabloids, but they they put a wrong, they put a bad narrative. Yeah, I mean, there's people right like there. you to give an opportunity to yeah. put the right narrative mm -hmm. and know that he wanted people to Go. change their lives. That so did um okay so your dad is still in maximum hole where you can't visit him or anything at all well i can visit i just can't touch it, i mean yeah, it's through the glass you can't okay it's on his phone through the glass do you think that they'll ever um at least ease up on that where you can be able to touch him and hug him and all of that again i think it's either some of the stuff that we're working on gets to the point where he gets out but I don't believe they want to let him out of there. I think they really want him to die in that situation. They don't want him to see the world. Because I prayed about it so many different times because to me it's like every time when I think about it, I know you've been living this life, so certain things you're over, you mm -hmm. know, but when anybody, I'm sure other people who watching it can, you know, feel it too, it's like, I just want to cry sometimes when I think about it because I put myself, I try to put myself in that situation when I see your mom and I, I met your mom and I see how sweet she is and how upbeat her personality is and how hard I know it probably is on the inside, yeah. you know, trying to put that on all the time and have fun knowing that she really wanted to hug her husband. She want to be with her husband. You know what? Um, all his family, but definitely my mother. Right. You know, she's been... To go on this journey, she's chosen to take a long ride, you know, and then we're constantly fighting. So, see, it's a lot of people that they've given up, you know, saying his name and I got love for him is the right thing to do, but they really don't know. Um, they don't believe right. that something could possibly happen. It's, it's people that do. So I'm not going to knock everybody down, but right. it's people that have really giving up. They say that he's never coming home and and they just say his name because they like everything that comes with saying his name right. and that I love and support him. Like I run into the issues where and I try to tell people, but people reach out to me to support what they trying to do as far as gang culture and behavior and can you tell your father this and my guy's over here and like my father is fighting for his life. Right. You know, you still talking about chief this and chief that and got pictures of pick pitchforks and six point stars, you know, as representing my father while he's fighting for his life. Right. You know, you are part of the reason why his opportunities are get taken thinner away. and thinner. Right. Because you still, I'm saying that he's not controlling none of what you guys are doing. Because if he was controlling what these guys in it the street was doing, done. they would be doing growth and development. They would right. be helping fight some of the injustices in that community. They would be taking stake in their community. But they keep the narrative of what, um, you know, what the government do. But, and if they feel differently, if they feel differently than, than what the government thinks, why y'all portraying him as... Chief and six point stars and pitchforks. You can't put the pitchforks and the six point stars down and have it in your heart and your chest. Or do what you do, but don't do it when you um representing and talking about my father. Exactly. But the thing see these guys, I gotta be honest with you. To me, yeah, it's more that has nothing to do with your father. Yeah. That's more beneficial to that person who's doing that because they're trying to set forth some type of a reputation. Yeah, I'm being real, and I, when I look at that, and I even think about Rick Ross and the whipping work and uh, Hallelujah and 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 saying all these things. Right, I don't think that has nothing to do with your dad. Yeah, that's more of a person trying to promote whatever they're promoting within the project of their mind or their or what they're trying to do for as for their image. That has nothing to do with Larry Hoover, who basically been locked up since 1973. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? There's no way, because they don't even know him. Yeah, They never, some of them probably haven't even read a book. Some of them probably haven't even looked up the history of it. They're just doing it because it's something that if I say this, and because of what the government has portrayed this to be, yeah. I can look a certain way. Mm -hmm. I can I can throw this out here. I can sell a certain amount of records. I can do, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and this is something that's really sad, to be honest with you. Yeah, it is. Because you really, you're doing this, and at the end of the day, this guy who has 
really been locked up because of the legend yeah. of who he is. Like when we talked to Ice T, and he said, uh, "Ice T is just a reg, you know, a regular dude." You, got, we was at his house. We sitting in the in the talking to him, mm-hmm. and he says, "I'm just a regular dude." Now the legend of me, yeah, what people think of me, it mean I could probably kick such and such so many niggas' butt and all kind of stuff. But just who I am is not the legend of me. And legend is part fiction. Legend. A legend is part fiction. That's why the story becomes a legend. It's like the night you were in the club and you knocked out one guy. The legend says you knocked out three. Mm-hmm. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah legend, that, make it, that, make it, that make it hard, man. Yeah, yeah, right. Because now you got to live up <laughs> yeah, to the yeah, legend. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So, so a lot of stuff about me is legend. It's not the truth. It's, it's just people. <laughs> and that, and that's exactly my thoughts. Uh, for one, you supported what I said with these guys that are working on themselves, and they don't really, the concern about him is not real, but that's what we fighting, the legend of Larry Hoover. We not fighting for. The man. Yeah, the man. Like, they not looking at who my father is, what his beliefs are, and the changes that he's made. They still holding him responsible for the legend of Larry Hoover. And that's what these people keep doing. They keep the legend of Larry Hoover going. Larry Hoover, the gangster. It's, it's, mm-hmm. You know, it's definitely people that know about some of the positive things and they try to promote that because he was somebody that kept order. You know what I mean? He kept unity between all the different organizations or what have you. Nobody was able to just bring peace like that so people can, you know, so it would be safe for our mothers and our kids and all our women to just, you know, be in our community. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.